Our Father in heaven, we thank you this day. We thank you for this gathering. We thank you for your hand in it. We thank you for your identification with us. We praise you and glorify you, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. I pray that through your word you begin a special work in our lives Amen. and fulfill the purpose of bringing us together in Jesus' name. Amen. We thank you, Lord, for the answer. In Jesus' name, I pray. Let's sit down. We are looking at a series of teaching titled Christianity as of old. Christianity as of old. I know that topic is a mantra. That is something that we have had before. Powers of old, miracles as of old, faith as of old, and all that. And now we put everything together under Christianity. God has been leading ministers of God, servants of God, to be thinking of the time of old. That is, those who have used this topic before me, who have been touched of the need to have a taste of the old time religion. And the Lord has laid upon my heart that this time we look at this very important subject Christianity as of old. When we talk about Christianity, three words call for attention in that word. Number one is Christ. Number two is Christian. And number three is Christianity. See that inside that word, you find those three words. When you look at the first six letters, you find Christ. And joining with the la uh, next three letters, you find Christian. And then we come to Christianity. The first two words are found in the Bible. Christ, many times in the Old Testament. Christian, three times in the Old Testament. But that word Christianity is not found. And um, you need to understand. You know, there are people that will say there is something not in the Bible. When you talk to some people, because of the disoriented Christianity we have or disoriented religion, somebody say that is not in the Bible. And because it is not in the Bible, it is to be rejected. Or maybe it is not in the Bible in their own language, like rapture or like Bible, which is scripture, the book of the law, the book of God, and all that. And so they say, it is not in the Bible. Now, so don't let us be tempted to say, the word Christianity is not in the Bible. It is the word that came out of Christ and Christians. And so the combination of Christ and the Christian make Christianity. What is Christianity? Who is a Christian? And who is Christ? Let's have a look at that. What is Christianity? Christianity is the way of life introduced by Christ. That's Christianity. It is a way of life introduced by Jesus Christ. And so this life is manifested by the person who is called a Christian. 
like the first place we have the word in the New Testament. Let's look at Acts of the Apostle chapter 11. Acts of Apostle chapter 11, verse 25 to 26. Then departed Barnabas to Tarsus for to seek Saul. And when he had found him, he brought him unto Antioch. And it came to pass that a whole year they assembled themselves with the church and taught much people. And the disciples were called Christians first in Antioch. The meaning of that is that these people manifested the life that Jesus introduced. And so because of that, they say, they are Christians. They live the way Christ lived. They manifested the life of Christ. They showed the way of life introduced by Jesus. And so they say, they are Christians. And so you understand now, from that we go to who is a Christian. If Christianity is the way of life introduced by Christ, a Christian is the person in whom the life of Christ manifests. A Christian is the person who lives the way of life introduced by Christ. A Christian is one, a man in Christ. 2 Corinthians 5.17 if any man be in Christ, a new creature, all things are passed away, and behold, all things are become new. So a Christian is a man in Christ. Number two, a Christian is a person in whom Christ lives. A person in whom Christ lives, in whom Christ dwells, like the apostle, in Galatians chapter 2, verse 20, I am crucified with Christ, nevertheless I live, yet not I, but Christ liveth in me. So a Christian is a person is not only in Christ, Christ is in him. He's in Christ as you put the iron into the fire. Christ is in him as the fire entered into the iron and assumed the nature of fire. So it's like somebody who enters into Christ. Like that iron put in fire will now become like fire. And so a person who really is in Christ, the more he stays in Christ, the more like Christ he should be. And that's what the Lord is calling attention to. And that's what Christianity is originally. And that's what Christianity was in those days. The more a person is in Christ, the more like Christ he becomes. Because one, a Christian is a man in Christ. Number two, is a person in whom Christ lives. Number three, a Christian is a person in whom Christ is formed. A person in whom Christ is formed. Galatians 4.19, the apostles say, my little children of whom I travail in birth until Christ be formed in you. You see, I'm traveling in birth again until Christ be formed in you. A picture of, you know, maybe a pastor or a minister that you have ministered to people, you have taught them the word of God and they have become Christians and they are living well, but it appears a lot of diminishing return. He's setting up in their Christian life. But sliding is coming. And you guide them together, you may call it a retreat or a camp meeting, and you are like starting all over again so that Christ be formed in them to make them know what is really, what does it really mean to be a Christian? And so that is what a Christian is. And it is when somebody has got to this third stage that he manifests the life fully. When he, uh, when he enters into Christ, he manifests the level of the life of Christ. 
as he lives in Christ, he manifests a higher level of the life of Christ. As Christ is formed in him, he now manifests the highest level, becoming like Christ. And that is what Christianity was in the days of the Bible. And that's what the Lord wants Christianity to be all the age of the church. Because it is not like that. That's why we talk about revival. That's why we talk about, you know, back to the old part. That's why we are now talking about Christianity as of old. Already we have seen what Christianity is. And number two, now we have seen who is a Christian now, who is Christ? Who introduced this way? Who is the Christ that introduced this way of life? Because you have to know the one introducing the way of life to you before you are following it. You must understand the person giving you a doctrine before you are believing it and you feel you will not be lost. You must know who is the one that is introducing this new way of life. Who is this Christ? What right has he to introduce a way of life? And we are preaching everybody all over should adopt it. Who is he? You know, sometimes also, you know, you may be doing something. And you tell somebody, and I say, hey, brothers and sisters, if you cannot use this book for Sunday school, use it for a Bible study, or use it for say, who are you? That are telling us to adopt a book. Who are you? That are telling us to adopt this way of life. Sometimes you preach today, somebody will say, that's their own opinion. Who is he? Now, we can say that to man. We can't say that to God. We can't just say that to Jesus. And when Jesus Christ was to introduce the church, he first of all conducted this test among the disciples. Let's come to Matthew chapter 16. Matthew chapter 16. I read from verse 13. When Jesus came into the coast of Caesarea Philippa, he asked his disciples, saying, whom do men say that I, the son of man, am? So putting himself at the level of their understanding, I am the son of man like yourself. Who do men say that I, the son of man? Who do they say I am? And they said, some say that thou art John the Baptist, some Elias, and other Jeremiah, or one of the prophets. The people were not even able to fix who he was. Then he said unto them, his own disciple, but whom say ye that I am? You have been with me. You have heard me. We have been together. You know me more than these people. Whom do ye say that I am? I'm one of them. The search of the hour. One among a thousand. That's what I want to be. How about you? The one that has the answer. And has the correct answer for that matter. The answer that is authenticated, sanctified by God. Look at verse 16. And Simon Peter answered and said, Thou art the Christ. The son of the living God. You call yourself the son of man? I see in you more than the son of man. You are the son of the living God. Not a, a son of a God. A moon God or sun God or star God or agricultural God. All those dead idols. You are not a product of all those idols. You are the son of the living God. He said, thou art the Christ, the anointed one, the promised Messiah, the God-sent man, the Emmanuel, 
God with us, you are that Christ. The son of the living God. Verse 17. And Jesus answered and said unto him, Blessed art thou, Simon by Jonah, for flesh and blood has not revealed it unto thee, but my Father which is in heaven. So you are now seeing Christ who introduced a way of life to us is the Son of God. Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God. And that's what the Son of God means God in man form. It means the express image and likeness of God. The last Adam. You know when God created Adam? He made him in his image and likeness. Do we remember? Do we remember? Does anybody remember here? Not everybody might have known it. God made Adam in his image after his likeness. But after Adam fell, he lost that image and the likeness of God. And we are told in Genesis chapter 5, Adam now got a son in his own image. After his own likeness. That's where Psalm 51 verse 5 comes in. I was shapen in iniquity. And in sin did my mother conceive me. So we are not, nobody was born a son of God, a child of God. We are born sons, daughters of Adam and a fallen man. A man outside the will of God. A man outside the garden. A man that sinned and there is no record of repentance. A man that God separated from and no joining back. A man that went with a cause and did not see any reason, any way to have the cause transferred to blessing. That's the product of all we are, cause carriers, before we meet Jesus. Every man without Christ is a cause carrier. He's carrying that cause all over the cause of Adam. But now, to see man restored to that same original state, God sent his own son. Born of a woman though, but the express image of God. Let's come to St. John to meet this son of God. Because it's very important to understand who is introducing a way of life. St. John chapter 1. I read from verse 1. In the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. Look at it. The word, capital W, talking about that, that son of God. But now you call him the word. He said it was in the beginning and it was with God and it was God. Look at those three things. In the beginning. With God. In fact, is God. That word. But look at verse 2. The same was in the beginning with God. To know that this is not just an abstract word. He said, all things were made by him. You begin to think now that <laughs> this word is a person. This word is a human being. Because it says, all things were made by him. And without him was not anything made that was made. So that's what is the, is the creator. Is the maker. In that word is life. You understand now he's introducing a way of life. Shout hallelujah. hallelujah. You know, the Lord Jesus told us, said, man shall not live by bread alone, but by what? By what? Every word 
Because in that word is the life that is approved of God. Don't be deceived. The life acceptable to God that we enter heaven is the word that proceeds from that word. Some people are surprised and they are, they, they, they are angry if we insist that we are to live by the word of God. If you are going to live right, if you are going to live acceptable life, if you are going to have eternal life, because it is the word of eternal life. Look at those people that Jesus challenged. Say, Will you also go away? They say, To whom shall we go? You have the word of eternal life. If we are caught away from you, we are caught away from that word, we'll be living the different life, foolish life. We want to, we like to live and we will not get to eternal life. So we can't leave you. If you are connected with the source of the word of life, pure word of life. Jesus Christ himself, please don't ever allow anything to separate you. Let your son be who shall separate us from the love of Christ. Shall tribulation, shall distress, shall famine, shall austerity, shall sickness or barrenness. I don't have a child. I don't get the fruit of the youth. Will that separate you from Christ? No. If we are separated, we are lost. We are caught from the source of life. Because in him, look at verse 4, was life. And the life was the light of men. That is, this life is to show men how to live. This life is for every man. And when somebody lives like this, his light shineth in darkness, and the darkness comprehended it. No. You know, sometimes you can go to vigil and pray. Say, oh, all oh, darkness, live my life, live my life. This brother is not in Christ. This sister is rejecting Christ. Show them Christ. As they enter into Christ and Christ is in them, light fills their life, darkness disappears. But outside Christ, you are wasting your saliva. The darkness we still comprehend, we still overcome. But immediately you get yoked in union with this life. You see, the darkness comprehends it not. Look at Job. Look at all he faced. And the man was still maintaining his head because of the life. And it was even a lower life. We have a higher life. Shout hallelujah. hallelujah. God will help us. Amen. I say God will help us. Amen. God raise us up for this generation. Amen. Use us to introduce a new culture. Godly culture into our corrupt society. Amen. The word is life. Then come to verse 14. To now see the word we are talking about. In verse 14. And the word, he has not lost that capital W. And the word was made flesh. A human being. He, he was made flesh. How was he made flesh? I will show you now. He said the word was made flesh and dwelt among us. And we beheld his glory. It's not like the glory of a, an, a, a, a son of an earthly king. It's not the glory of an earthly president. When we see the glory, there is no glory on earth to be compared with his glory. Shout hallelujah. hallelujah. And we beheld his glory. The glory as of the only begotten of the Father because he's full of grace and truth. John be a witness of him. And everybody believed John as a prophet at that time. And say even John, the greatest prophet on earth, he be a witness of him, and Christ say, this was he of whom I spake, he that cometh after me is preferred before me, for he was before me. And of his fullness we have received, and grace for grace. For the law was given by Moses, but grace and truth came by Jesus Christ. No man has seen God at any time. The only begotten Son, which is in the bosom of the Father, he had declared him. That's the man, that's the person introducing the way of life to us. 
this, the, the word that became flesh. And if that word is God in verse 1, it is God that became flesh. And it's introduced, how did God become flesh? It's a mystery. Come to First Peter, uh, First Timothy. First Timothy, because some people will now say, how can you say God become flesh? Hey, God doesn't have a son. Nobody beget him. He didn't beget anybody. You say, brother, a natural man cannot receive the things of the Spirit of God. They are foolishness unto him. And they cannot know them until they are born again. If you give your life to just you understand. If you throw away your prejudice, you understand. If you are caring to listen, you understand. If you say, oh God, open my eyes, you open your eyes. Come to First Timothy. Chapter 3. First Timothy chapter 3. Look at verse 16. And without controversy, no argument, no controversy. Jesus is the Son of God. Jesus is the Son of God. Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. Jesus is the Savior, the Messiah, the world needs. Without controversy, Great is the mystery of godliness. That is, great is the mystery of things God does. Great is the mystery of things that we can talk about God. Great is the mystery of everything. When it is God, how can somebody just say, let there be light and there was light? Let there be this and there was that. Just by the word of his power, calling everything to existence from nothing. And all he created from that time has continued to function according to the design. That's mystery. Great is the mystery of godliness. Hold on. Look at it now. Now explaining that mystery. And those of us who are, you know, educated people, you know, the minute you talk like that, see a colon. It was God who manifested in the flesh. That's John 1 14. Do you understand now? Do we understand? That's John 1 1 and 14 explained there. God was manifest in the flesh and justified in the spirit. He never displayed a carnal spirit. He never made a mistake. He never did something in the flesh. He never did something that could not be approved by God. He was justified in the spirit. He rejoiced in the spirit. He walked in the spirit. The spirit of the Lord is upon me. He has anointed him to preach the gospel. And everything, everything by the spirit. And he was seen of angels. In his family ministry, yes, we come from heaven. They testify to everything he says. They will come to minister to him. He will pray. They will just be manifesting around to show that this is a superman. Sin of angels. Preached unto the Gentiles. And nobody could contradict the preaching. Do you know that it was an emperor that uh, introduced Christmas? Shout hallelujah. Because when this wonderful Christ, the preachable Christ was preached, and he saw no one like him, and saw all that things, and then he just, you know, he embraced Christ. And then he saw that this thing, and look at what that person did. Whether in error or in superstition, it has a purpose it is serving in the whole world. Shout hallelujah. If we know how to make the best of it. Is preached among Gentiles, believed on in the world. Since the world had been, people continue to believe in this Jesus. Believe in this Jesus. Believe in this Jesus. And received up to glory. And that Jesus is coming back. For his coming, we are prepared. And so, my brothers and sisters, that's Christ. That's the one who, in, who introduced this way of life we call Christianity. Come to First John, 
chapter 1. First John chapter 1. Let us look at from verse 1. That which was from the beginning, which we have heard, which we have seen with our eyes, which we have looked upon, and our hands have handled of the word of life. Look at the, the eyewitnesses now talking. A great apostle John. He said that which was from the beginning. John 1, 1 again. Which we have heard as the word. But we have seen as a man, the flesh. We have seen with our eyes. And we have looked upon because we fellowship with him. We even touched him. Our hands handled him. And that is the word of life. For the life was manifested, and we have seen it, and bear witness, and show unto you that eternal life, which was with the Father, and was manifested unto us. That which we have seen and heard, we declare unto you, that ye may also have fellowship with us, and truly our fellowship is with the Father, and with his Son, Jesus Christ. And these things write we unto you, that your joy may be full. And these things we are sharing these three days that we know the way of joy as Christians. That our joys may be full as Christians. That we know what we have. That we know what God has given us. And so under this series today, we are looking at Christianity as of old. The first topic is the old time Christianity. The old time Christianity. Tomorrow we shall look at the old time conversion. The third topic we shall look at the old time brotherhood. And then we shall look at the fourth topic, the old time evangelism. Christianity is about all this. It is inside all this that we have everything hinged. Today, let's look at the old time Christianity. And I'll be looking at it in three ways. Number one, Christianity yesterday. Number two, Christianity today. And three, Christianity tomorrow. Let's open our Bible to Hebrews chapter 13. Hebrews chapter 13. Don't forget that the word Christianity now came from Christ. Because Christian came from Christ. And so if you are to talk about Christianity, we can't talk about Christianity without talking about Christ. And look at what the Bible says about Christ. Hebrews chapter 13, from verse 8. Jesus Christ, the same yesterday and today. And forever. What's the meaning of that? The, the apostle speaking at that time was trying to say, Jesus Christ, the same yesterday. Yesterday to them now was before Jesus ascended. That is Jesus Christ of the gospel. Then today, Jesus Christ of the acts of the apostles and the epistles. Tomorrow, Jesus Christ, as he will be seen in the lives of others who will believe through us. Shout hallelujah. So that's what they were saying. So when that apostle said Jesus Christ yesterday, in his day, the yesterday was the days of Christ on earth. When he said today, that was the days of those powerful disciples, powerful apostles. And he said, but he shouldn't change. Christ doesn't change. Christ remains forever. What he did yesterday, he's doing today, he can do again. And if you look at the Gospels and the Acts of the Apostles, and when we get to the section four of our revival, uh, the study our brother was doing, when we talk about the church winning, 
You see, that is the church at that time. And what the Lord wants the church to be in every age of the church. And if you are not going to look at Christianity, we have to look at it also in this light. What was Christianity yesterday? Because it was Christ yesterday. What is Christianity today? Because we are also talking Christ today, we pray Christ today. So we want to check on now whether Christ has changed now. And what is the Christianity tomorrow? That is that the one we are expecting that we are saying, God give us revival, give us revival, give us revival. What kind of Christianity should be tomorrow? What kind are we to leave behind for our children? One. Christianity yesterday. Christianity yesterday was pure. Two, practical. And three, powerful. Christianity yesterday, in the days of the apostle, was number one, eh? pure. Number two, practical. Number three, powerful. Now come back to the meaning of Christianity. The way of life introduced by Christ. So that way of life, yesterday was pure. No crookedness there. It was, he called it a living way. Practical. And very powerful. Anybody who walked in that way in those days is over the devil. It's over Satan. It's over the powers of darkness. No demon tormenting him. He doesn't need deliverance after I receive the Holy Ghost. He's speaking in tongues and he's still looking for deliverance. He cannot sleep at night. And that's Christianity of today. You can never find that in the Christianity of yesterday. It was so pure, so practical, and practicable and so powerful. Look at Acts of the Apostle, chapter 2. Acts of the Apostle, chapter 2. Let us look at from verse 40. Acts of the Apostle, chapter 2, from verse 40. And with many other words they did testify and exhort, saying, Save yourself from this untoward generation. Now, it was Peter that was preaching on the day of Pentecost. Let, let's start from verse 37 so that you understand the, how pure it was. Now, when they had days, what did they hear? Verse 36, Peter proclaimed, Jesus is Lord. And when they have heard this, they were prayed in their heart and said unto Peter and to the rest of the apostles, Men and brethren, what shall we do? Then Peter said unto them, Repent and be baptized, every one of you. <laughs> every one of you. No exception. We need a pure church. May God help us to go back to our church and declare efficient everyone. And preach next Sunday and say, repentance for everyone. Salvation for everyone. It will be a wonderful message. Shout hallelujah. hallelujah. Everyone. And the apostle say, repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the remission of sins. And ye shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. For the promise is unto you and to your children and to them that are far off. Even as many as the Lord our God shall call because this Jesus is the same yesterday, today and forever. Anybody coming into this Jesus, he has the promise of the Holy Ghost, the promise of the power. And with many other words in verse 40, he exhort them and say, save yourself. Come out of this wretched world now. Come out of this corrupt world. Are you yoked with this world? Come out and taste power. Come out from this untoward generation. And we are told in verse 41, they that gladly receive his word. Some people don't like us to tell them, come out of the world. Is that you may have power? Is that you may begin to overcome? Is that Satan may not overcome you? 
all this oppression, all this fear, all this Satan kicking you here and there like football, not certain, jumping from church to church, from ministry to ministry, from sin to sin. No life is stable outside Jesus. No life is sure outside Jesus. If it, if it is not over, it is not over. If you have not got there, you have not got there. When he told them, look at verse 41. Then they that gladly receive his word, they say, thank you for showing us this truth. They were baptized. And the same day, there were added unto them about 3,000 souls. Christianity yesterday. And they, without exception, 3,000, continue steadfastly. Pure church. Pure church. They continue steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine. That's practical too. They practice that doctrine and uh, in fellowship and breaking of bread and in prayer. And fear came upon every soul and many wonders and signs were done by the apostles. Powerful church that the power of God was manifesting in their midst. And we are told in verse 47, they were praising God and having favor with all the people. That is, the Christianity of yesterday was attractive even among sinners. Shout hallelujah. hallelujah. People attractive to them. Admirable. A thing admire. Ah, how, how are you? How are you doing? How do you overcome? Tell us the story. That's what was bringing them. Look at the Bible reading we read this morning. Something just came to my heart as we are reading that um, Joshua chapter 2. That's a picture of Christianity as of old. Rahab never met any Israelite. Shout hallelujah. The day she saw those two spies, huh? she took notice. These are special people. They are not like customer. You know, the woman was a harlot. Shout hallelujah. If you pass through the house of a harlot, will you see you as a customer? Or unlike customer? So she saw these were not like customers. These were special people. These were people of God. And so she began to take very good care of them. And began to... The people didn't preach, oh. Shout hallelujah. It was the woman saying... We have heard about you. We have heard about your God. In fact, all of us here, we are meted. And she was also making the other call for herself. Please save me. You. Ah, God help us. Amen. This is what you are looking for. The life that preaches. Convicted the woman. Herself making the other call. Begging for salvation. And he said, me and my father and my mother, everybody, please save us. Oh. God, give us Christianity. Amen. Give us revival. Amen. This is the Christianity as of old. So look at what you are told here. They were having favor with all the people. And the Lord was adding to them daily to the church daily, such as should be saved. No sinner added that the church has of old. That's precisely of old. Yesterday, pure. Look at how pure it was in chapter 5. A man wanted to introduce sin. Holy Ghost quickly executes him. Because we don't want this sin to become impure. This evening is lost in the church today. Everybody does what he likes. And if you deceive somebody, you will become a politician. You will be campaigning here and there. He will not see his sin. He will not repent. He will be justifying himself. That's Christianity of today. You have mouth to, to talk. When you are disciplining, you will be praying, you will be seeking the face of God. Because Christianity is pure. You know the reason today, also, the people being disciplined, they have seen loophole in the lives of those disciplining them. That's another problem. 
they feel they are not better, but that's unreasonable for anybody under discipline because if Nigerian police arrest you, you cannot begin to say, but you, this police, are you righteous? You take bribe now. Can you say that? There is a man now being pushed here and there because they said, a, 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 what, what do you call it? Is it looting or embezzlement or whatsoever? And he was being thrown here and there. He didn't say he's not guilty. He's only saying we are many. <laughs> he's only saying I'm not the only one. So if you trace it from lowest to the top, there is something I sent here and there. That's the only thing he's saying. But notice something. He's not saying he's not guilty. And he has no mouth to say, you police arresting me, all other people, wait. We are going to examine you yourself. Do you know what they call the rule of law? You cannot be a judge in your own matter. You are in it now. If anybody will challenge those people, it's not that man. Are you getting what I'm saying? No. He can defend himself, but he's not having the right to say, you also, you also, you are doing... Mm -mm -mm. Face your problem. And brothers and sisters, shouldn't we be careful? Shouldn't we be careful? If the judgment of man is so serious, how about the judgment of God? The church was so pure. And so when this man wanted to bring evil, the Holy Ghost said, no, we don't want this kind of church. He was killed. I look at verse 11. Acts chapter 5, verse 11. And great fear came upon all the church and upon as many as had these things. And by the hands of the apostles were many signs and wonder wrought among the people. And they were all with one accord in Solomon's porch. And of the rest does no man join himself to them. <laughs> no unconverted person joined himself to yesterday Christianity. They knew themselves. If I'm not converted, I shouldn't follow them. Nobody, look at that word. Of the rest, does no man join himself to them, but the people magnified them. They say, Ah, you are great, oh. God, give us grace to be like you. Give us grace to be like you. That's Christianity yesterday. Pure. Two. Eh? Practical. It's not just saying if you sin, we discipline you. It is practical now. The man was disciplining. And because that impurity was removed, power returned. Look at the miracles happening in the life of Peter. We gather many people together, we are going to crusade. The interpreter is a fornicator. The choir members, they are, they are dirty. All the committee planners, they, are, they, are, they have embezzled money, and they are saying, Jesus, Jesus. And nothing is happening. And people are not getting saved. Even the miracle they say they are receiving, they don't keep it. It doesn't last. They receive the difference yesterday, they are still coming today. Because it is not pure. It's not practical. It's not powerful. And so that is the Christianity we covet. Christianity of yesterday. Let's come to number two. Christianity today. In the plan of God, it should be the same. But is today's Christianity the same as the Christianity of the House of Apostles? Is it the same? No, it's not the same. Today's Christianity is polluted, perverted, and powerless. What was it yesterday? Eh? Pure. But today? Eh? Polluted. 
Two, what was it yesterday? Practical. But today? Perverted. What was it yesterday? Powerful. But what was it today? Powerless. That's where we mourn. That's where we need to think. That's where we need to pray. That's where we should be concerned if there is any of us who is truly of Christ. Who accept that Jesus Christ yesterday, today, and tomorrow makes the same Christian yesterday, today, and tomorrow. Manufacturing companies in the world can manufacture original goods 10 years ago and they can begin to make counterfeit today but not Jesus. The kind of Christians he made yesterday, he makes today. And if tomorrow comes, the same kind of Christianity, he will do what? He will make. So that nobody can deceive you. Nobody can say, no, no, no. We say, no, there's no new way. Because Jesus Christ is the maker of Christian in every age. So how did you come here without a wedding garment? How are you here without Christ? Why did you enter into Christ? We will ask you. Is Christ living in you? Something is asking you. Is Christ being formed in you? It's a matter for attention. So my brothers and sisters, if you are talking about we are preparing for the coming of the Lord, this is a practical thing we should be thinking about. I can be sure Jesus is coming and we make it only if I can examine myself with Jesus. Not with men. And you know what to get when you go to Jesus, he always tells you something that you lack. In fact, you yourself say, what lack I yet? And by the time he tells you, you know that you still need some things to do. You have a long way to go. So that keeps you growing. That rule out pride from your life. Because you still look at it and say, it is still, it's not yet as yesterday. And that's the Christianity. Look at 1 Corinthians chapter 5. 1 Corinthians chapter 5. A picture of today's Christianity. Look at from verse 1. It is commonly reported that there is fornication among you. <laughs> Christianity of yesterday. Where have you find fornicator? Any fornicator in the early church? I mean, the earliest part of the early church. Because this is the last part of the early church now. When all those apostles now when they plant the church and they replace, they commit it to other people, those people begin to mess up. And look at what happens here. It is commonly reported. <laughs> commonly reported. That among pastors, among reverend, many of these evangelists that they go from village to village, they pollute people, guests from village to village. Touching women. Sleeping with them. Countless numbers. Ah, and you are still carrying Bible. You are not afraid of the judgment of God. And it is common. Look at what he says. It is commonly reported that there is fornication among you. And such fornication as is not so much as name among the Gentiles that one of you, once you have his father's wife, there is no kind of Sexual immorality you don't see in the world today. And Christians are involved. And ministers. I look at what he's saying in verse 2. And ye are puffed up. Despite this, we are talking, you are, you are contradicting. Instead of you to humble yourself that God doesn't judge you, that the ass of judgment doesn't fall on your head. Despite this, you have mouth to talk. If others complain, should you complain? If others don't get some pleasure, some other thing, I would think, I say, maybe, let, let me pay a little for my sin. A person that should be in prison. 
and you are still poured up. And have not rather more that he that has done this might be taken away from among you. Today's church. That impurity be taken away is what should be walking about. This revival labor. Look at verse 6. Your glory is not good. Know ye not that a little leaven hmm? leaven at the whole lump a little level, level at the whole lump. That is where the problem of today's Christianity is. A little permissiveness. A little permissiveness. Little, 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 little. Little, little, little diversion in marriage. Little deviation in dressing. Little, 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 little. It becomes a big problem now. Don't you know a little level? A little error. A little poison keys, friend. A little fire burns. Is there any cold fire? Any cold fire? He said, can anybody carry fire under his garment and not be burnt? That's sin. Come on to verse 7. Purge out therefore the old level. So that he may be a new lump, as he on level. For even Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. And because he sacrificed for us, his blood sacrifice is sufficient to purge out from all sins. So you can see that today's Christianity is so polluted. Perverted in Galatians chapter says, Paul the Apostle was talking about how the people perverted the gospel. They change it. People change it now. I had a preaching one day. Some people have been saying some you know, contrary thing, contradicts about that man to me. That he will tell people and we say, Don't worry about anything you wear. I am here. And I'm telling you, don't let anybody deceive you. And some other things like that. And on this particular day, I heard him saying, you are permitted to be carnal for three years. And he used Luke chapter 13, where Jesus says, Jesus gives you a parable that uh, uh, this fig tree is looking for fruit on it for three years. And uh, so he couldn't get fruit. And so the Lord was begging, so you are still permitted for three years. And he built a doctrine on that. And there are many things like that. And they will say, you can fight, you can do anything, you are still maturing. It's because you are not matured. Now, we will be seeing some things these days. You know, there is a serious confusion. There is a, a willing sinner. There is an unwilling sinner. But both of them are what? Sinners. sinners. And you have to understand something about sin. The root of it is in the heart. And when the Lord wants to save us, he laid the ass on that root. I know there are some of us here who, who made Christianity. That when we were saved, our carnality was not going back to sin. Anybody like that? Our carnality is just you 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 know you may you don't have knowledge. You can be doing some things out of order. If your father say don't go to church, you say you are going to hell, daddy. Carnality. It is true <laughs> that what was stop me from going to church. He may, he, may, he may even tell lie to go to Bible study. Carnality. Because he has not known like the lie of Rahab. You know Rahab told lie. Do you remember? 
in that book you will see how that lie was explained how to understand it you see you look at situation like that that was granted but at that time a brother who repented of fornication is not near fornication again no eh? mm -mm. the canality didn't go to that one if he repented from a draw light tree, <laughs> every time they are doing it in the village, he may even want to go and destroy their shrine. Or he may run away. The father will say, come and carry some, say me. He will refuse. They do not remain in that seat. But our preachers today say, you can be fighting before. After you are saved, you continue fighting. You are committing fornication before, but now if you are still falling into it, it's because you are not you are not yet mature. You are saved. It's a lie. If any man be in Christ, all things are passed away, and all things are become new. Even what I'm telling you, you can bear witness that in those days, when a sinner repent of a particular sin, he's not waiting for one year to run away from that sin. Eh? That sin, he dressed that particular sin. There may even be some other thing, but that particular sin he repented of. Especially this idolatry, this fornication, drinking. He's not taking one year to mature on that. So even now, because this is the partial truth, the partial truth is that this person can still fall into some sins that he has not known. Are you know what I'm saying now? Something don't see no easy. In fact, some of the things people do in idolatry, they may still want to do it in the church. The way they respected idol, worship idol, they may still want to worship God like that. You know, there are some people that will come to the church and when they want to give testimony, they, they are still genuine brothers and sisters when they come to the church and then when they want to give testimony, maybe a woman, and then she will come on the ground and be rolling here, rolling here, rolling there. Then we tell that same madam. And next time, don't roll on the floor. But we accept them. In fact, we may not talk at that time, at that video, we will not talk. So on Sunday, I will try to wrap that in the preaching. Uh, how, how, you know, because as a woman, if you are rolling like that, or your rapper falling apart and your nakedness is being exposed, God understands. Just need and, and wave your hand and praise the Lord and everything. But it's an ignorant. That's the level she knows. She's praising God from her heart. And God accepts her. Do you understand? But she doesn't continue to do that when we bring some level of understanding, temptation that others can yield onto. And if she's truly born again, she will appreciate that teaching. You understand what I'm saying? So Christianity today is so perverted. You see, there are people perverting the gospel of Christ. Because we say we have liberty in Christ. We have grace. We are not under law. Yes. Law doesn't save us, but we still keep law. In fact, Jesus says, I came not to destroy, but to do what? To fulfill. The evidence Christ is in you is that you can keep the Ten Commandments naturally. Shout hallelujah. Not as a means of salvation. But you have a higher law inside you. Jesus Christ is that law. So you don't have any other God beside God. You don't have any graven image. You don't call the name of the Lord in vain. You remember the day of the Lord to use it in holiness. You honor your father and your mother. You do not kill. You do not commit adultery. You do not steal. You do not be a false witness. You do not covet. It's normal. Not for salvation. But that is the outflow of Christ in you. And then people will now come and say, we are not under law. So because of that, if you say, brothers and sisters, don't let us do this, don't let us do this, they will say, are we under law? Leave people. If we want to regulate dressing, you know, we began to have problem with dressing and dressing like other people are having problem. And then I began to challenge these young people. 
And I think it was uh, 2014, I started telling them. I said, it's okay, pay attention. Because if you say this, they will say, uh, these people are doing this, these people are doing this. I say, let us agree on something. It's not even a matter of it is sin or it is not sin now. You may not be convinced that it is sin. But are you convinced that we can have a standard in our church? Can we decide just to be different and to do things in a different way? Then look at you no know, different kinds of people in the world. They have uniform, they have anything, and they wear the way they like. Can we also agree that it's okay? Then it began to make sense to some of them. Shout hallelujah. And that is why, again, I see that our own life is very important because we must get to a point that even if people feel they can reject the gospel, if they can't reject you, then they begin to reason, I would rather be with you. So, my brothers and sisters, don't let anybody deceive us. We are to go back to the old time Christianity. And that's the call of the hour. And that's what gives us the hope of revival. And today's Christianity that have accommodated all evils and all this, how do we solve it? We look up to God. We look for Christianity of tomorrow. And Christianity of tomorrow is that of yesterday. Shout hallelujah. hallelujah. And the Christianity tomorrow that we are expecting. Let's go to the third one. Christianity tomorrow is delivered, dedicated, and dynamic. Christianity tomorrow means the Christianity we, we are looking for. One, a people delivered. And God will deliver us from the present mess, from the present evils, from the evil spirit of this age. We must see deliverance today if we will have Christianity tomorrow. If you remain Christian till tomorrow, and that tomorrow is the day of rapture, you must get deliverance today. And as we are in this conference, pray to God for deliverance. Total deliverance from sin. Deliverance from worldliness. Deliverance from the past of darkness. The oath is where to our father Abraham that he will grant unto us that being delivered, we will live holy, righteous, before him all the days of our life. Jesus is deliverer. He will deliver us. Amen. So if we will have Christianity again, oh, brothers and sisters, if you remain a Christian, if you must continue to be a preacher, Sunday school teacher, call Christian, please, today, get deliverance. Two, Dedicate. Dedicate yourself today. If you don't dedicate today, we will find you tomorrow in sin again. It will show that you have played hypocrisy today. All of us are in this conference. Nobody is making anybody feel small and all that and all that. Praise the Lord. I say praise the Lord. Just hear the word of God. And take decision. But if anybody leaves this conference and is living the old, polluted, perverted, powerless Christian life, it shows one thing. Why he was at leisure. He was a rebel. He rejected the word of God. He despised the word of holiness. All of us now, we are 100%. We don't know anybody. But if somebody go away from here, and remain the same. You will know those who trouble this camp. You will know those who cause problems. You will know those who, you will not be like that in Jesus' name. 
deliverance today. Dedication today. And dynamism today. Get power today. Power to live above sin. John chapter 1. Verse 11 and 12. St. John. Open your Bible please. Look at chapter 1 verse 11. And 12. He came unto his own. And his own received him not. But as many as received him. To them gave he power to become the sons of God. Even to them that believe on his name. To them that believe, he gave them power. We shall receive power. Yeah. And so the call of the hour before we pray is the call to go back to the old time Christianity. Old time Christianity. And there are several things our attention is being called to. Number one, Christ. Number two, cross. Number three, conversion. Number four, church. Number five, consecration. Number six, commitment. And number seven, crucifixion. You can't be a Christian without any of this. You can't be a Christian without, number one, Christ. Number two, you can't be a Christian without cross, the cross. You must have been to the cross. You must have bowed at the cross. You must have settled the death of Jesus. The shed blood. Number three, you cannot be a Christian without conversion. Being to the cross is as meaningful as you are converted. You are saved. Number four, you cannot be a Christian without church. Stop running about. You are not committed to anywhere. You just come to conference. When you go back, no church of membership, no church of responsibility. It is a life of hypocrisy. You have something to hide. That's not how to make heaven. Jesus is coming for the church. And if you are not part of the church, you will not make rapture. All the churches cannot be bad. Are you the holiest in Nigeria? So it, it, it tests your discipleship. Because when you are like that, nobody asks you anything. You go where you like. You do. That's not Christian life. So that's why some people don't join church. They will say, they will listen to radio on Sunday. They will share many preaching. They will say, I'm practicing it. They will buy a book. You have missed the whole thing. Can you have a tree without root? Hmm? And you say yes. I'm doing no, no, no. It's not like that, though. Hey, I know what I'm doing. At least I'm obeying God. I'm not committing sin. Who told you? Your major sin is rejecting. You forsake. He said, forsake not the assembly of the church. Those that believe, they steadfastly continue. Do you know that in the days of the early church, even there is no pastor. Look at even Paul the apostle. He will still come. He has a people to be responsible to who will check his ministry, check his preaching, check what he's doing. Give account. Great apostle who have been to the third heaven. It's not possible to be a true Christian without church. Number five, without consecration. You cannot be a Christian without consecration. You must be consecrated to the Lord. Set apart, dedicated. Number six, you cannot be a Christian without commitment. Commitment, steadfastness. And you cannot be a Christian without crucifixion. Put it this way. One, you need the saving Christ. That's what makes a Christian. The saving Christ. Number two, the substitutionary cross. That's what makes you a Christian. 
the substitutionary cross. You are the one that should have died on that cross, but Jesus died for you. Like Moses littered on the serpent in the wilderness, it is a substitution. So the son of man is lifted up that whosoever believeth in him. So you cannot be a Christian without believing the cross, without knowing that Jesus died for you. Number three, sound conversion. That's what makes you a Christian. What's number one? Eh? Saving, Christ. Saving Christ. Number two? Substitutionary cross. Number three, sound conversion. As we saw in that at chapter two. Number four, scriptural church. Not just any church. To be a true Christian, you need a scriptural church. Number five, saintly consecration. The consecration of a saint. Number six, steadfast commitment. Steadfast commitment. To whom shall we go? You have the word of eternal life. That's what makes you a Christian. If you are there, be there. Don't be there, don't be here. And number seven, self-crucifixion. This is what you continue to attend to. We see more about that. You know that studies. Self-crucifixion. That's what makes a heaven-bound Christian. And I pray when the Lord will come. We shall be qualified. We shall make heaven. I pray that the Lord bring us back to himself. Bring us back to glory. Quickly look at Jeremiah chapter 6. This is the call of the hour to everyone. Jeremiah chapter 6. Look at verse 16. Jeremiah 6. 16. Thus says the Lord. I'm not the one speaking. The Lord is speaking to you, brother, sister, ministers of God. Thus says the Lord. Stand ye in the ways. Many ways. Many churches. Many doctrines. Many fashions of holiness. Stand ye in the ways. And see, and ask for the old path. Where is the good way? And walk therein. And ye shall find rest for your souls. But they said, What did they say? Can you imagine the people God said, You are restless? But I want you to have rest. You are troubled. But I want you to have comfort. And these people have loved sin, loved the world, love sin so much that they said, we will not work there. It's a problem. And it's a problem we are going to pray to God to solve in our lives. This problem is in us, but we don't always know it. It is resistance. To the word of God. And that's what we are going to pray and break now. Every resistance to the word of God in me, God crush it. Anything that can say no to what God says, God destroy it. The Lord told Noah, go out of Sodom, go to the mountain. He said, I cannot go to the mountain. Let me go to this place. Is the problem we have. It's not as pronounced in every one of us alike. But we still find certain resistance to the truth in that one, in that one, in that one. But a thing God can do for us is that anything saying no to God shall perish. Yeah. Whatsoever is saying no to God in our lives, we do what? We perish. Even if God wants to heal us, that thing we say no. 
Can you see now that it's against you? So don't love it at all. If God wants to deliver us, that thing will say no. If God wants to anoint us, that thing will say no. If we pray and God wants to answer, that thing will say no. That thing that is saying no to God, saying no to the word of God, saying no to the spirit of God, it shall perish. Let's rise up on our feet. The Lord says, stand in the way and see. Walk in the way and you will find rest. No one of us will remain restless in Jesus' name. No matter what has troubled or is troubling us, everything shall be settled in Jesus' name. Let's pray now. Satan is not our friend. He is our enemy. Sin is not our friend. He is our enemy. This self, this, this body of sin is not our friend though. It, it is a friendly enemy. We come in as a friend. He carry bomb under him. And he will come as if he's part of you. But by the spirit and the power of God. Everything against God in me. That's how you want to pray. Everything that is against God in me. Everything that is against God's word in my life. Everything saying no to God. Everything resisting the hand of God. Everything resisting the power of God in me. In the name of Jesus, perish, perish, perish. Open your mouth and pray. Pray that they continue to perish. Everything that is resisting God. Everything that is against the mind of God. Pray my brother, pray my sister. Pray that such a thing shall perish. Such a thing shall be destroyed. In the name of Jesus. They shall perish. They shall perish. In the name of Jesus. 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 In Jesus name we pray. Oh God. Overthrow the power and the kingdom of Satan in my life. Shall we pray like that in the name of Jesus? Oh God, overthrow the kingdom and power of Satan. Overthrow the power of Satan in my life. Overthrow the power of Satan. Overthrow the kingdom of Satan. Overthrow the power of Satan in my life. In the name of Jesus. 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 Oh God, destroy the power of Satan. Oh God, destroy the power of the enemy. Destroy the power of darkness. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Even if there is any sinner here, the Lord will save. No matter how far Satan has gone, in the life of any of us, God will arrest him. No dropout among us. I say no dropout among us. The Lord is raising us up together. We are becoming an army of the Lord. 
The Lord is bringing revival through us. Amen. Let's open our mouth and pray finally. Lord, I need your deliverance from every power, from every dominion, either dominion of sin or Satan or flesh, anything that keeps me under from every kind of bondage bondage to a woman bondage to a man bondage to an idol bondage to an habit deliver me oh god open your mouth and pray in the name of jesus oh god deliver me from every bondage every bondage deliver me oh god Deliver me, O oh God, from every bondage. In Jesus' name we pray. By the finished work of Jesus Christ on the cross of Calvary, we are drawn back to the cross in Jesus' name. By the work of atonement, by which the precious blood of Christ was shed for our redemption from all corruption, from all perversion, from all powerlessness. This day, there will be effectual work of the cross over every soul in Jesus name every corruption spirit of perversion that is working powerlessness in the foundation of individual lose your hold in Jesus name Lose your hold in Jesus' name. Every stronghold of corruption in the heart, in the mind, in the senses, drawing people to eternal doom. Lose your hold in Jesus' name. This day, by the finished work of Jesus on the cross of Calvary, by the love of God that made Jesus to become sin for us, he who knew no sin, had no sin, that we might become the righteousness of God. By that power, and effectual working. I say that we are drawn back to old Christianity in Jesus' name. Christianity as of old with the life of Christ without hypocrisy, without pretense. Oh God, we are back. We are back. We are back. Blood of Jesus. Purify everyone in Jesus' name. Absolute purification. Unto absolute practicality of Christianity. To the full empowerment of the Holy Ghost. 
Lord, do your work within us in Jesus' name. Lord, we are praying. We are back to the fullness of life that comes to Jesus. Let it be so in Jesus' name. Any voice, any spirit, any enchantment upon anyone saying no, it is not possible. We ask that such be destroyed in Jesus' name. Such be destroyed in Jesus' name. Anyone here whom Satan is lying to that it is not possible. You can't go back. You are already arrested. I pray Lord such shall be renewed restored revived today in the name of Jesus absolute conversion sound church and dynamism release upon us in Jesus name Lord truly the generations of Jesus Christ is beginning again. New generation of Christian. New generation of Christianity. Bible Christianity. Oh God, we look up to you. 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 Begin your work afresh in Jesus' name. The soundness of this teaching, the purity of this teaching, the spirit, as the scripture says, God commanded Moses, and with the same spirit, Moses commanded Joshua. And with the same spirit and authority, Joshua commanded the people. Lord, with the same sound, pure spirit that released unto your servant. Simple, sound, saintly, preaching it to us. Let the same spirit take over everyone in Jesus' name. Let the same spirit purify this atmosphere. Sanitize everyone. And make us a peculiar people to God in Jesus' name. Thank you, Father. Glory be to your name.